start, um, actually start at the front. So this is every shift. Every shift, the bands are the same. Whether they are all down or all up, they are the same. Um, if I am closing and I know that it is pull-ups the next day, that's really the only time the bands are down. Um, up and over, there's a lot of things that we're using these boxes for. So unless there's going to be pull-ups or something that you're using those bands for, which is really only pull-ups, I would say typically almost always they're up, okay? But most importantly, that they're the same no matter what, okay? Um, here, so mopping duties. Our AM trainers, so this is opening trainers, this is 8.45s, and this is noon. We mop this area and this area completely. If there was any sort of a run and gun or anything that um, would have caused footprints here, we mop that area completely. However, we spot mop that area no matter what. We come up here and we mop this no matter what, okay? Now, what we also do is we spot mop back there every single class. The difference is evening, they mop that area completely. But we go there and we look for sweat every single time. Boxes, you're mopping. These boxes or you're taking paper towels and spray and you're getting off the little um, sweat dots every single time. That's not a back is PM, front is AM. So the mopping duties are the only thing that changes and the difference is it's a complete mop up front in the AM, it's a complete mop in the back in the PM, but every shift we spot mop everything. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, vacuuming duties. So AM, which is 8.45 or noon, one, two, three. That's us every single time. I recommend, especially my morning shifts, but really anyone, if you're here early enough that you can knock that out beforehand, you have permission to knock that out beforehand. You can get it out of the way. So that's a question. Uh -huh. Just a process question. What's the point of vacuuming? So, so we're vacuuming so that we get the entire mat for the entire day. Day. It doesn't matter doing it before. We're not trying to clean up after the class. No. We're trying to just get Do it done. get the mat cleaned yeah. every single day. Always yeah. After oh yeah. I because I, before, I'm like, I mean, people. Yeah, we don't mop. We don't vacuum this at five fifteen. They're still laying on this part of the gray mat. Yeah. It's just that those gray mat is getting vacuumed every single day. So yeah, before the classes, I recommend it um, yeah. actually. And, and then. Anybody working 4:30, go talk to some folks before you bring the vacuum out. Yeah, because I beeline it for there. A B2 <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Like, but the other thing is, if you get here early, knock it out beforehand. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that you don't have to worry about it. So right. that your time can be spent there. And you're still like, the like, I gotta go. Right. And then, um, it, so morning is 5:15 right there. One, two, three. 8:45 and or noon is here, here, and here. So they've got three, right here. 4.30 is the rest of the mat. One, two, three, four. 6 p.m. does not have a vacuuming duty. They're cleaning and putting up everything. <laughs> um, so that is the way that vacuuming goes. Any questions? There. Okay. Um, boxes, they're not here right now. They need to face all the same way. Um, ideally, it's with the red out and the arrows are all the same way. And they are wiped down, especially after like, um, I mean, anything. When you're going and changing off that speaker, you want to make sure that you're getting the footprints and the sweat marks off of the boxes. We go through here. These guys, bane of my existence. Okay? We have color coded them for you. Nice. If you are ever in doubt of what goes to what, they have sizes. It goes smallest to biggest. It's not the colors of the rainbow. Okay? The shortest. To biggest, okay? There's a 7.10, 8, 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.8, 8, 8, 10, 9, 9, 2, 9, 4. So if you're ever in doubt, that's how they go. What I see a lot of, I can't, I can't even be bad. But like that's still, I don't care if it's here, it is excellent. It's like this is what you walk into and you're like, this is a nice, clean, good gym, okay? So this is is a duty every single class. It's not morning, it's not PM. It should look like that. What we want is 515 gets to come in here and they get this crisp, clean gym. We want that same experience. Those members are paying the same price at every single class, okay? So that is something that we check. What we are doing is having childcare and front desk. We're assigning duties of them to help. 
And these are one of them. That doesn't mean that it's just our job, but these are things that they know they can come in here and they know how to do that it can help that process out. But as trainers, you're looking at this before you leave. If it hasn't been done, it's, it's our job, okay? Hey Britt, real quick. Uh -huh. if, we're gonna, if we're gonna take it that far, right? As far as, don't get me wrong, I love this. Um, like a color coding and everything, if, if it's like this. No, I don't care about that. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just going to say, I care about this. I'm not saying you have to. I will literally walk over here and I will take this out and I'll put this in because guess what? Do you know how good it really looks when you walk up here to get a rope and they're all color coded and they all say Fit Camp 180 here? It does. And that's oh, just, yeah, that's, that's me. It looks beautiful. That's me. Sir, it looks beautiful. I need to get to work at some point in time during the day. <laughs> right. okay. Here's the thing. Just saying. What, mo mo most importantly than anything, I want you... Um, to take pride in this place and treat it like your home. Um, but it is a it is a clean home no matter what. The level of OCD is about right here. That's a requirement for everyone. Um, if you take it a little bit further, I mean, you got brownie points. Um, but the bare minimum is pretty effing OCD, okay? <laughs> pretty OCD. Um, we are wiping down cubbies, pre-workouts in this guy. This place is still new construction. It's dust. Take a napkin. Check them. Wipe down the tops. Look for... I can tell you because I did it today. Oh, someone actually wiped it down. I had my pre workout right here. It was sticky. So we're checking those cubbies, okay? Bikes. Bikes are at a level five here. Bikes are at D's here. It's right under the D. After every shift, they are level. At D... At five, my OCD-ness, they're all the way down, okay? Well, you don't want someone getting in here. They don't know that. Their first thing like, I can't even pedal the bike. I'm out of here. Cancel my membership, okay? <laughs> it's down here, okay? We are spraying the seat. We are spraying the handlebars, and we are spraying this area. Um, and the big reason for that is you walk in an 845 class, you get on your bike, and you look down, and you just see someone sweat. Or it's, a, it's spray and it just looks like nasty sweat. We are 405 champions because we don't have sweaty, stinky bikes, okay? And that is as simple as spray here, spray here, wipe, wipe, grab that last. Um, it has not been an issue because it was cold. Now these efforts are dripping sweat. So you wipe it here, here, and here. Now we're not just spraying and going, we're spraying and we are wiping. What I do a lot of times, I'll spray here here and here and clean that and then as I mop I will bring the mop by I don't get it on the gray mat so I'm gonna I'm gonna say let's not water. do that actually um that's what we were doing and I and that's what happens depending on someone's level of squeeze in the mop I you've already got your rag drop down and we're thinking we're getting it and if it's an actual sweat mark you, you actually have to like put a little bit of elbow like grease into it um we did a lot in Edmund but it makes this nasty if it's not actually um wrung out and i've done that before okay. too so i would take that rag but i would spray here this guy gets dirty and just wipe it wipe like it wipe it there sometimes mm -hmm. like people drip yeah so just and brent to to be a little more cost effective to use the rags as opposed to the paper, i use the rags yes right? the rags you'll just yep. sit there and use paper towels paper towels yes i use just... the rags and what i'll usually do is if i don't put it in the hamper my my day and i see it's the same rag the next day but we go through those we launder them so you can throw it in there after your shift if you want um i'd probably recommend 6 p.m you throw it in there you use the same rag the entire day and then just throw it in the laundry but yeah it's way more cost effective so that's something that again no one's doing anything wrong or right we weren't looking for it because we've never had hot weather here yet yeah. and so that's just an additional thing that we're gonna look at um the green mat is vacuumed every saturday now we don't touch the gray mat on Saturday. It's vacuumed every day. The green is when we're gonna vacuum on a Saturday. So that's gonna be one of our, our duties. So good so far? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, kettlebells. This is how they should look. Mm. Um, they're not here. Mm. They're not here. They're not even like that. The way that I spend a lot less time of trying to make them beautiful, I stack one to this, stack one to this. Yep. So you're not trying to make them easy lines. I use this to straighten them up. And I go. Um, so they should look beautiful. Um, the hundred piece is the only one that's ever down here. Okay. <laughs> yep. 
Um, so kettlebells, that, that, that is something that we're checking, that we're looking at. Um, how good gracious dumbbells. Where's our, oh, we've got fives out there. I was like, where's all our dumbbells? Okay, this says five to tens. That does not mean that tens go here, okay? Um, we work out in the dark. What I am seeing more often than not, not with all of our new people, is they're using like an eight and a 10 mm -hmm. at the same time. Eight and a 10, not good. We want people to literally with their eyes closed be able to find their dumbbells. Um, good, again, new member experience. Anything that we can do to eliminate confusion or embarrassment, we're gonna do. So the way that that works is your fives go until you can't go fives anymore. And then it goes into eights. Your eights usually start about right here. And your eights go into eights, eights, eights. You'll never have fives underneath here. Your fives fill this guy up. You can put your extra eights underneath here, your extra eights go underneath here, and they actually, we've got enough space that you actually, and actually you'll never have that, you'll never have them stacked. These 12s, what I do is I start them right here. I have 12s here, I have 10s here, so you've got one single line of extras so that people can just grab them instead of grabbing them and something falling on their hand, okay? So your eights go all the way here, and you'll have extra eights. Your 10s, the we have enough weights that your tens will make all three lines of these. These will always be your tens, and you'll usually have about six tens left over. Yeah, I'm a psycho. I know these things. Okay, and then your twelves. Your twelves are here. I don't know how we ordered so many twelves. We ordered a lot of <laughs> a lot of twelves. So your twelves go all the way here. You will always, again, I would put these eight twelves over there, so they're not double stacked, so people can actually get those weights if they need them. Your twelves go all the way down here. And then typically, if those are down there, you won't need 12s right here. Your 15s will start, okay? Worst case scenario, you got two 12s right here. As long as they're coming first, you're not fired. I'm just kidding. You're never fired. I love you guys so much. Then you go into 15s. 15s, 15s, 15s. These are actually 12s. If you guys haven't saw that, we have a lot of 12s to keep them single. So my 15 right here, since that's my only 15, my 15 will actually start here. So your 15s actually go over. 15s are all the way through. 15s start. As soon as you run out of 15s, your 20s go, your 20s go, and you have 20s underneath here as well. If you've got extra 20s, you don't know where they came from. They start here, right? We're now in our 20s and our 30s. 25s, so you see 20s up here, right? So you've got extra 20s, and that's because we've got some out there. But your 20s, 25s, 25s. Then you've got 25s underneath here. You usually have some extra 25s about this first line. Then it flows into 30s. 25s aren't down here with a 30 over here. It's 25s into 30s. You usually have a couple extra 30s right here. Can anyone tell me what's wrong right here? Probably the 30s, I would say. 25. 25. Yeah, that one. I would have put that 30 over here. Super easy. <laughs> This 30 goes right here. And then I would figure out where my 25s end. That's a 30, that's a 30, that's a 25, okay? And then it just continues to go. 30s, 35s, 40s, nothing heavier than a 40 here. We start our heavy bodies over here, okay? So we only have less weight, so it's less confusing. 45, 45, 45, 50, 55, 55, here. And then our big bodies. Anything wrong here? Yeah, they're not on the rack. <laughs> so these are really heavy. I actually want this pretty much like this. You've got your 60s, your 65s, your 65s, 70, 75. Honestly, what I would probably do is do 60s, 65, 65, 70, 75, and your 85 right here so that you just got less weight on that guy. And then I would just tuck these, your 90s, your 95s, and your 100s. Just right here so that they look great. So that you're not accidentally less weight on these the better because they're big bodies okay so that makes sense we rarely run into this we run into a lot of that <laughs> um big thing is coming in our mixing sure especially like when your people put them up they didn't do it right don't assume because there's not dumbbells here that they're done right and the other thing that they do is they'll just lay them and they won't actually rack them this falling on your foot horrible so we want to go in here and if there's not room and it's like over here Put it on the next one, scoot them over. Um, let's keep our people safe and it just looks good. I do not want to um, dog. Make sure that the numbers are facing up and out. 
If you can. That is, that is the, here's minimum. Yeah. Here's, if you're gonna go above and beyond and you've got five minutes to spare and not get fired at your real job, absolutely. But this is minimum. This is bare minimum expectation right here, okay? Um, benches, if we use the benches, they are sprayed off. Um, if you are closing and the benches are going up and they have not been sprayed off, do not have your people put them up. You spray them off or they will smell horribly. So they go here and then you stack them with the bench facing down. That's where your benches go. Your um, squat racks, the big thing here is that they typically are going to play a little bit of a pretzel, right? So the easiest way to keep them aligned is you're pretty much putting them inside of each other. Okay, so we had all of this, all the squat racks out, then I would put a squat rack here facing this way, and then I would put the other squat rack leg in this gap. Does that make sense? That you're just kind of like Dr. Mario in it. They're not just all spread and backed up to right here. That is the most efficient and organized or best organized way to put the squat racks in there. Tetris. And again, your clients won't know that. So think about that when you're asking them to pick things up. Have them pick up the big heavy stuff that you're gonna go back and fix and you do the things that requires like any sort of tact because they're not gonna do it. Okay? Um, while we're back on equipment, so if you're a 6 p.m.er, you're mopping back here as well. 4.30 closers, they're um, cleaning off this cardio equipment. That is one of their duties after 4.30. And our 4.30s know that, but if you're ever 4.30, that's actually something that you do. Okay, but that's on a normal part of our, our everyday shift. I have you guys doing a lot. The cardio equipment being wiped down one time a day is enough for now. Okay? Um, here. Um, just making sure that we've got some sort of organization like these guys. Two and a half, fives. These are 25s, 45s. These are 35s here. These guys, just making sure like they, they have some sort of organization. Like I would actually put these guys together because these are fives and they're pretty. And these are fives and they're pretty. Um, big thing is they need to at least minimally be the same um, weight. Now, one of the things that I want you guys to be cautious of, this plate holder is for our pretty plates. These are the plates that we want people to go out and wrap for us when we're ready to plate push. No one wants to push a rusty, nasty plate. Eventually, we won't have those. But right now, that's where our deadlift. Like, we're gonna have a nasty, if you see a rusted plate over here, stick it over here. That's what we want people deadlifting and throwing and, and murdering and being really bad to our plates. We want them to do that to our nasty plates. These are beautiful plates. They're closer to the gray mat, and those are the ones I want people licking and putting their forehead on. Also, make sure people use that rack for 45s. I'll see people a lot of times. Yeah, it's 45s. 45s no, it's 45s only. And it's ideally used our pretty plates that are going over um, to our, our mat. Um, trying to cruise, 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 cruise through that. Make sure our boxes are straight too and before you leave, please. Boxes straight, absolutely. Um, benches and squat racks vacuuming. And then um, 430. Um, so it is 4.30's job to um, preset for the next day. That is a way that I try and love and serve on our closers at 6 p.m. Um, no one likes to close, guys. That's, closing is harder than getting up at 2.45 in the morning. And so we wanna make that as easy as possible. So um, after the 4.30, you're cleaning up just like everyone else. Your extra duties are your vacuuming and you're doing the cardio. But then you're looking at the workout and you're figuring out what can I do to make this 6 p.m.'s life easier. So for example, you want to find something or find things that you can put together that won't impede on the 6 p.m. workout. So if we're in a workout that we need this out for the next day and we're not using the black at all for that workout, I would put this out between the 4.30 and the 6. But maybe we are using this and all we can do is create body pump bars. You can create body pump bars and you can lay them here. You can put them in there. If we're not using the green, you know that you're gonna have kettlebells the next day across the green, put the kettlebells out. So those are the things, and it's the 4.30 person's job to know what the workout is. The next day, they can help preset, and ideally what happens is your 4.30 and your 6 p.m., they, they, you're leaving while they're coming, and they can also say, hey, this is what I can use, really use help with. 
Um, sometimes there's nothing that we can do to make their life easier because of the way the workout is programmed. But that's the conversation you're having with your 6 p.m. double checking. Hey, is there anything that I can set out for you early? Um, and that's what we wanna do at that 4.30 shift. So be mindful of that because it saves a heck of a lot of time for those 6 p.m.ers. Do you have something to say, baby? No, I was thinking about the time where there's nothing you can do and you're just in your head like, oh man. But sometimes it's like that. Sometimes there isn't and that's okay. Like if it's box jumps and it's a day like this, I'm like, we can't put your dumbbells on there for you. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but if it's, you don't tell yourself like, oh, I can't set that up because like, they, 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 they might use that. You can set up half of it. You know, if it's a, some people were doing burpees over there, I think it was a dead, deadlift day one time and they were slowly using some of the black, but I knew they wouldn't use all of it. I just made barbells for here and I waited there, but I made the body pumps and I already had them made, so we just had to lay them out after the 6 p.m. class. Um, that is really everything. Um, taking out our own trash, so um, front desk checks our trash. But let's make sure that we are taking out trash together as a team and not just giving it to our eight month pregnant Miranda to take out the trash. Um, we're responsible for making sure that trash is emptied into the big trash, all your energy drinks, things like that. But they come in and they check it. But when we're leaving together as a team, grab a trash bag, put it in the back of your truck or walk it over with them. There is a conversation that's happening today that childcare and front desk, front desk is really good about it. We haven't enforced it with childcare, but we will now that they are also helping close that's not just for 6 p.m any shift we all leave together as a team so what ideally is going to happen is you're going to be coming in here when they get done and wiping down boards or doing a jump up so we'll give them specific tasks so they're not coming in here and be like i don't know what the setup is but they're doing the you know just monotonous little things that take time right and so that should be something that you guys are seeing and um, start to happen if it's not um obviously let kelly let Flores know about it but we want you guys to get to work on time. We want you guys to get out of here on time, but we also wanna make sure this place uh, looks excellent. It makes a difference. I get so many compliments from Edmund members and South members, like when they come in, like, it looks awesome in here. It makes me wanna work out in here. So I hope that that doesn't feel like I'm slave driving you. I just want people to come in here and know that like, we love this place and we're taking care of this place. Um, I kept feeling that I wanted to, or like I failed. He's like, I got one last thing. You said 12.45. <laughs> one last thing. Before you leave the gym and turn the lights off, you need to check. Oh. So, I'll give you an example. Give like, him a raise. Right. And you need to hit the door because there's a lot of times like people will do that and you'll hit it and the door will just swing wide open. A lot of the time. These two doors are real bad about it. Yeah, that one's all right. They'll do it right now, but you need to hit them to make sure it's. But hit literally. slam it shut and make sure because there's been several mornings I come in and it's a habit to hit it and it'll swing wide open. And the last thing we want is somebody come in here and know the knot and take all of our knots and put it. Yeah. Um, last really small thing, this is for closers and this is hopefully temporary. Let's start unplugging that clock. Um, it's acting weird and I think what's happening is when it's raining, condensation aka leak because our builder sucks. You can put that in the video. Um, <laughs> is I think making the outlet wet. <laughs> and shortening it out, which can cause a fire. As much as it would still be his fault, um, I don't wanna close down the gym. So that is something that, um, you put a reminder on your phone, I'm here most evenings, but we know that we turn off that clock, let's just unplug it just to be safe, especially this with spring. morning it kept chirping when we plugged it in. So what I did, and I don't know if it'll work every time, is obviously I got a box because I'm short so I can reach it. But if you unplug the cable that goes into the side of it, the power cord from the side of the clock and plug it back in or clean it off, as soon as I did that, it came on immediately. So but the timer still didn't work on it. Yeah, so we're gonna get a new one. Work, but at least we have a <laughs> clock up there. So that's something, if it's chirping, it won't stop, you can try that. Um, last thing, um, just same thing there is like, we work out basically in the dark, even these guys. Like, so ideally, um, weights, unless it's like in, oh, even now, your dumbbell go light, heavier, heavier, heavy hits, backwards. Not so heavy, not so heavy, not so heavy, lightest, always. So if it's single arm rows and you're uh, cleaning up after a class, a 40's never down there, right? Um, you want them to literally, if they were blind, be able to know right about here is where I'm gonna find how we're gonna 
because literally they look out the door. <laughs> um, so just those types of things, but just knowing that that's the expectation. That's how we have everything programmed. Our kettlebells, when we're straightening up the kettlebells on the green afterwards, it's not a yellow is down there. It is the lightest, heavier, heavier, heaviest back down it. So it's not just about straight lines. It's making sure right here you can see lightest to heaviest, heaviest to lightest. After the 515, that 20 pound weight shouldn't be on that white line, but over there. Does that make sense? Again, a blind person to come and sit camp on a and work out. Bring him, Riley. I don't know. And then we're going to kill him. <laughs> I know a deaf person. <laughs> well, he'd love it here. He can't hear all our crap music. Um, that is pretty much everything I've got. Um, and I'm sure there are things that, again, we will um, mention as like we grow. Um, but I just wanted to get... Oh! It's, that's not a cleaning duty list, guys. Review the cleaning duty, duty list and make sure fans go off, that light goes off. Um, there was something else that we are going to have to start turning. Oh, <laughs> that block. Um, basically, make sure everything's just off. But yes, your fans. Uh, make sure that we're setting the alarm before we leave. Make sure that we're checking the doors. Um, if you think I might have forgotten something, I probably did. Read your closing duty list that I created for you guys because I love you that much. One and thing to know also is that if you turn off this front speaker, oh, these go, they're not off. They just, no sound is coming out of them. So a lot of times I'll see these on and I think people assume that they're off because no sound's coming out of them. You want to go walk to the speaker, still turn it off. Because yeah, it's that one's connected. So when that one turns off, sound stops. That's that right. one's connected to that one. So if you turn that one off, a lot of times we're just thinking that one is, or someone else got it. So when we turn it back on, that pops because it was already on. Mm -hmm. um, but more than anything, I know we're asking a lot of you guys, and we appreciate it. We could not do this without you, but I also, I truly believe that we are one of the cleanest, one of, oh, no, I don't believe we know. We are an award. We are the best fitness studio in Oklahoma, and the, these are the things that we've got to do to keep it that way. And guess what? When we get a thousand members, I will hire a professional cleaning crew. I will have printed boards that's written in like Skrillic or I don't know or something. But until then, I just really need your hearts. Yeah. And I love you and I appreciate your time. It won't always be like this. But I love this season too. That's it. And I love you. You better watch every single part of this video, whoever you are. <laughs>